it is with you know great pleasure that Mike and I sit here and having our first pick together here in attendance with his uh, parents, uh, Bob and Ann. Um, like we talked about last night, Peter's a guy that we coveted, a guy that we didn't expect to be here um, for us at 11, and we're thrilled to have him. Um, so um, I'm going to pass it on to Mike before we bring him up and uh, introduce him to the uh, Titan fans. Yeah, absolutely. Just want to welcome uh, Peter and his family to, to our organization um, on behalf of the coaching staff and you know everybody involved. It's been great to see him uh, in the building. Uh, and meet everybody. Uh, I know he's excited, uh, just as we are, and it's just been cool. It's been uh, really comfortable. I'd like to welcome you guys, and and obviously this is a great opportunity, not only for us, but but for you and your family. And I know that Peter's you know, ready to get to work, and, and the first job that he has is to take your questions. So we'd like to welcome him and, and have a great picture here. Peter, with your grandfather playing for the Packers, was uh, playing offensive line just kind of in the bloodline, so to speak? Yeah, I think in bloodline, in the genetics, I don't think I really had a choice when I started playing tackle football. I think I was too heavy to even be allowed to carry the ball, so I always had to play all line. Um, never really played anything else, so just always felt natural. I was a bigger dude, so yeah. You mentioned the versatility that you have. If you're asked to put bump inside and play guard, like what is it, what is it, since the sixth grade you haven't played that position, I believe it was. So what is it that makes you feel you could bump inside and do that successfully? Yeah, well, more than anything, I'm just kind of trying to do what I can do to help the team. And so if that's what I'm asked to do, I'll definitely do it. Um, obviously, it's an adjustment having only played tackle. Um, the game's a lot faster in there. It's a lot different. Um, but that's just going to come with reps and just drill and technique. Um, but I was just happy to do it if it helps the team. So that's just my mentality, and I'll, I'll get the hang of it for sure. In working with Duke, is that something, that, you know, leading up to the draft, is that something that you, you worked on, just some of the things you may be asked to do? Yeah, to a little bit of extent. Um, obviously, nothing like two, two position specific uh, work both sides of the line, both positions. Um, so just trying to be ready to play anywhere. Um, but yeah, I think that helped a little bit. But it's hard to really do anything without putting pads on, which I didn't do at Duke. Um, so obviously, once I get the pads on, I'll have a better feel for that. Picking up on that are you surprised just by, I, I don't know how much attention you paid to it, but you said you took an awful lot of questions about it. Just how much big draft machine automatically looks at the arms and puts you at guard, despite the fact that you started every game at left tackle and had a, a very successful career there, have the bloodline and, and all of that? Yeah, yeah, obviously it was a, it was a big talking point. Um, I just feel like my opinion is that there's so much more that goes into being a, a good tackle than just arm length. Uh, there's so much more to blocking than that. Um, I think at the end of the day, it's just about blocking people. And I think I, I proved I could do that in college. Um, but you know, there's so much in terms of footwork and punching and efficiency with your hands. That I think matter, and that's something that I have to continue to work on to get better at. Um, but I think that that sort of matters more than just oh, your arms are this measurement. Um, so yeah, I just think there's more to it than that, and that's why I feel like I can play the tackle position. January, or was it kind of just manifesting during the draft that people were talking about your arms? Yeah, so I didn't really realize it was a thing until probably last spring when I sort of knew that you know the NFL process could be in my future. Um, and it was kind of funny, like during spring ball, I think last year, I made some comment about a rep, and I you know mentioned to my coach about oh you know my arms are shorter, so I had to do this, and he was just like, I don't care. So <laughs> that was sort of the end of that discussion, and it was just sort of. I didn't really think about it much until that. And then obviously it's been a big talking point for people, but I've always just had to sort of go out there and block people, you know, it's not about just length like that, so yeah. What have the last 18 hours or so been like for you? You talked about last night, your phone blowing up kind of instantly. Just how have you handled this? Yeah, it's been a whirlwind. It feels crazy 24 hours ago. I didn't really know what it was going to be my future. And now here I am in Nashville. Um, so just, it's been a whirlwind. and. I've got to take a second to just like stop and soak it in for a little bit, um, but just a huge blessing to be here and uh, and be a part of the Titans organization. So really happy about how things have gone. Yeah. What, what are your decisions Yeah, I just feel like um, obviously I'm not a, not a huge media guy generally, so I don't kind of want to avoid that that scene there. Obviously nothing against it, but um, also wanted the opportunity to have a bunch of family and friends and teammates around me, um, which I was able to do at home. Um, so really appreciated that and to spend that time with them because a lot of those people helped me get to where I am. Um, so that was that was what really kind of drove that and having those people around me for that. Read your friend Pompey talking about some of your leadership going outside of your comfort zone. 
Um, there's room here even for a new young guy probably to lead on this line. How do you plan on kind of gauging the room for that and, and what you're able to do as a first year guy? Yeah, yeah, I know obviously as a young guy, um, you know, it can be tough to tough to be in that position because, um, you know, you don't have the experience under your belt. But I think it just starts with just doing your job and being a consistent guy right off the bat, um, someone who does what they're supposed to do on and off the field. Um, so that's just where I'm, that's, you know, what I'm going to start with and, and go from there. I think guys will, you know, earn guys' respect by doing what I'm supposed to do. And that's really the only thing you can do to sort of earn that leadership position. In your meetings with Rand, with, with Coach Rabel, were you able to kind of gauge and, and just get a feel for like what this organization is about? Yeah, I, that for sure. And just obviously being an NFL fan and knowing the Titans organization and, and how they play and just like a hard nosed team and really tough mentality. Um, I was a Packers fan and pretty upset when they beat the Packers last year. Um, so just kind of, you know, familiar with what they do and sort of really admired that from afar and obviously now really happy to be a part of it. Now, having, you know, gathered that information, how do you feel you would fit into the organization? Yeah, yeah, I think it's kind of similar to how, like, our general mentality at Northwestern in terms of work ethic and just physicality and violence and um, just sort of that hard-nosed, gritty mentality that we had at Northwestern. I think that will be a pretty good transition for me coming here. I think same values here, too. Talk about the physical part of your game. How would you rate yourself as a technician? Because as a left tackle, you've got to be probably the most athletic part person on the offensive line. Yeah, yeah. I think technician is probably the number one title I sort of strive for personally, um, behind being, you know, being violent, being a physical player. But you know, offensive line is so difficult. You have to have technique. Um, uh, you know, especially I guess someone like me who's not like like the you know, built in a lab type tackle. Um, so technique is something I always really, really pride myself on. And that's what you're going to be able to win, especially at this level with this competition. Peter, what do you want Titans fans to know about you? I think I'm someone who, you know, prides myself on consistency. And I want to be someone for this organization that people can count on day in and day out on and off the field, um, that they can count on for a good performance week in and week out. So that's what I pride myself on. I hope, I hope fans realize that. Do you have anybody reach out from the Titans? Yeah, uh, Ryan Tannehill texted me last night just real quick. Um, I haven't checked my phone a little bit or I haven't checked my text, so maybe there might be more. But uh, just just welcoming me to the organization to I'm excited to get to work. So I'm excited too. So. Do you have any other connections just with, with college or Big Ten that you know some guys? I really don't, actually. I'm um, obviously familiar with a lot of guys on the team, but not personally. Now that the draft process is over, what are the next steps for you? Uh, yeah, just getting through, you know, mini camp and rookie development and just kind of find my way through the organization and learning the playbook for sure is, is big um, and kind of conquering that mental aspect, I think, will be a, a big priority in my mind before we put the pads on. The uh, family ties to Green Bay, how quick is the, uh, the transition that they're turning them over to and converting them to Titans fans here? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I'll... I'm going to put on that blue jersey, so it's not too hard. And once I'm going out there, I don't think it'll be an issue. Um, you know, obviously the organization, having my grandfather play there, will always be sort of a part of our family history and a part of me. But um, definitely all Titans now. Is there anything your grandfather ever told you that kind of stuck with you? Yeah, his big thing was keep your head up, was kind of his mentality. And I think, it's especially at offensive line, when things can get rough and it's a tough position, it's just keep your head up and keep going. And um, even from a technique standpoint, as my offensive line coach in college says, there's nothing to look at on the ground in terms of like coming off blocks and stuff. But um, that was his big line. Did your grandfather take you to any Packers games and take you down to the locker room, any of those types of things when you were young? Not really. Um, I mostly went to Packers games with my uncles who were season ticket holders. Um, I do remember one game I went with him where he did like an autograph signing and was announced uh, at Lambeau Field, which was really cool just to see that, um, have the whole stadium sort of cheer for him. Um, but I've been to tons of Packers games, uh, but mostly just with my with my family and my uncles. Was there ever a question about what position you would play? I mean, you you just start playing until you were 12, is that right? Yeah. How, how big were you then? I was pretty big. I was a sixth grader playing in the, that was my first year sixth grade, playing in the seventh and eighth grade league. So I was pretty large. Um, and immediately had like the stripe on the helmet saying I couldn't carry the ball, I had to play O-line. Um, so there wasn't really much of a question about it. I th <laughs> that was O-line right off the bat. What do you think your size was? Oh, I don't know. I'm looking at my dad right now, I can't remember. <laughs> On the biggest day of your life so far, you went to Northwestern and worked out. 
that say? I mean, is that just who you are? Yeah, I think it's just a routine thing, personally. Um, just, you know, it's really another day, and obviously, if it's a normal Thursday morning, I'm probably going in and working out. Um, and definitely getting some nervous energy out, too. Um, so just want to do that, um, you know, keep up with my workout routine. I think this is the afternoon, actually, I was like super anxious and stuff, just laying around the house. So I like started doing planks randomly, just like to get the energy out. Um, so yeah, just just part of my routine and get the energy out for sure. That physicality, the violence that you're known to play with, you know, like everybody has their own reason for it. Like what's your why? Like why do you play with that, that physicality? I just kind of love the aspect of the game of being able to dominate someone for 60 minutes. Um, I think that so much of that relies on physicality and violence and just sort of like moving a guy against his will um, and sort of getting him to fold. So I think that's really cool to think about. Um, I think some of the best moments offensive line we'll talk about is like a series where you only run the ball and you just kind of beat the piss out of the defensive line and just run it up the throats and, and, and move down the field just because there's such a physicality, uh, physical aspect to that. Um, and just like mano a mano, kick their ass. And that, that vibes right with, with Derrick Henry. And, and how yeah, he yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. That's kind of why I was definitely really excited to come here because I know this team has that mentality, um, especially with Derrick and the offensive line. So really excited for that. Yeah, I kind of came down to Stanford, Northwestern, Notre Dame. Um, so I want to go to a good academic school for sure. Um, I think just Northwestern kind of had everything I was looking for in terms of culture, uh, coaching staff, um, academics, like I said. Um, it was relatively close. It is close to home. That's not what I set out to do, but it was convenient for sure. Um, so kind of kind of checked all the boxes, so it worked out great.